In life, we encounter people every day, all of whom have stories to share. We rarely take the time to ask people their personal stories, many of which will touch, move, and inspire us in some way. Matt has a passion for making authentic connections and learning about people from all walks of life. He has lived a life of giving back to the community and making a difference in people's lives. Are you ready to meet fascinating people and hear some inspiring stories? The Matt Hilton Show will introduce you to a world of possibilities you never knew existed. Sit back, be present, and enjoy. Here's your host, Matt Hilton. Hey everyone, Matt Hilton here, host of The Matt Hilton Show. Today's episode is the second part of Bill Wallace's story. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned for a word from our sponsor, and remember to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. With almost 20 years of real estate experience in the North Texas area, the professional realtors at Hilton Realty Advisors have helped over 500 clients with their housing needs. Hilton Realty Advisors covers all areas of real estate, buying, selling, building, investing, and renting. We deliver the keys to home ownership to all through integrity, love, and joy. Call us today for all of your real estate needs. Going back a year ago, because um, you've had a year or two, I guess, contemplate, meditate, prayer, prayer said, um, where are you now? How, how does, I'm trying to think of the way to ask this question, when you die twice oh. and you come back, how does that change who you are and what you do and where your priorities are? Have they changed? Has it made you stronger? I, I'm back probably 90%. I still, my stamina is still not what it was, but no one would ever know it. Uh, used to never forget a face or a name. Now I remember all the faces, but sometimes the names are not clear. And the docs say that'll take two years because of the name. Number of times I was under a general anesthetic and the amount of heavy, heavy drugs I was on. Uh, but yeah, I did. They said don't drink for two months. I didn't drink from April twenty first to January first of last year, and I've drunk all my life. Now I drink mm -hmm. some again, but you know. Uh, It caused me to say that somebody else can run successful in Dallas. It caused me to escalate the succession plan. Mm -hmm. uh, it caused me to take a look at some of the things, and I spend more time out of town now, and more time in Houston, Magnolia, and down at Point Bolivar at the beach house with my son and my grandson and my daughter-in-law. Uh, it reaffirmed my faith. I got a call, gosh, two months ago from Germany. Now, this was from Australia. And said, I just wanted to see a lady. I just wanted to see how you were doing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this lady from Adam. She said, you were on our prayer chain. You still are. Mm. I was on prayer chains all over the world. I'm here because of prayer. So it reaffirmed my faith. Uh, money's never been a big motivator. People have been. And I'm doing things now, only things that I love and I enjoy. I'm not doing the things that I have to do. Mm -hmm. And I came up with the, just the fact I don't have to do anything. Uh, so I'm much more selective with my my time. I, I have often said, "'Twas not the acronym rot. The chief accounting term would be return on time." Mm -hmm. And believe me, as I turned 73 June the 15th, mm -hmm. uh, that return on time becomes more important every single day. Yeah. Uh, and having people like you Jeff Crilly, Casey Haston, uh, so many of these incredible people in my life, my success North Dallas family. My God, I've got the greatest job in the world. Yeah. Still, I get to put two people together, take a step back and watch the magic happen. Sometimes I get paid, sometimes I don't. It's not about the money. Money always seems to come. It's yeah. about the people. And I've often said that 
there's three levels of, of, of networking. One is the boom. You meet each other. Mm -hmm. 90, 80% chance one, one card, both cards will go into the trash can. 95% chance at least one will. Yeah. So you've got to do something to, to create a hook. A question. One of my favorite questions is, who is Matt? Hmm. Huh? People just step back. What? Who is Matt? Oh, gosh, nobody ever asked me that. Well, to create some form of a hook and to lead with, to lead with love. And that takes you to the second level of networking, which is just incredible. I call it net weaving. It's when you and I start weaving our networks together. And in doing that, you're now weaving to Casey's network, to Jeff's network, to Sam's network, to Shirley's network, mm -hmm. through me. And I'm now, net, I'm now weaving into all of your networks, your hundred guests you've had, the people you've worked with in the real estate industry. I understand I, from checking you out and looking at you, you're one heck of a realtor with Keller Williams. And, you know, you've, you've worked hard to get there. Well, you've got an incredible network of all these people you've sold homes to. They're now part of my network. Yeah. So net weaving. And then the final and the ultimate level of networking is servant leadership. And that's when I meet you. The first thing that goes through my mind is, who might I introduce Matt to that would better Matt or Matt could better he or she? Right. And that's the ultimate level. So you've got the boom, you've got the weave, you've got the servant. And that truly is networking at its prime. You know, I've often said with Success North Dallas, you know, and, and C-Suite, which I was involved in the starting of C-Suite in 2014 at the Fairmont Hotel. Now I've got 200,000 members around the world. Mm -hmm. But reach, what's your reach? Relevancy. What's the relevancy of you? What gives you the right? And what's your reciprocity? What's your give? Mm -hmm. So reach, relevancy equals need, reciprocity, give, and then with a ribbon around all three of those called respect. So it's the four R's. Reach, relevancy, reciprocity with a ribbon of respect tied around them. Right. That's the functioning core of both C-suite and of success with Dallas. And it's amazing because I stepped down from the insurance business nine years ago. When I did, 90% of my business was coming out of success with Dallas. Because lo and behold, I brought people there to meet other people. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, they brought people there to meet me. It's amazing what a simple give turns into things. We've, we've given away the, we, we've, we've had the honor, incredible honor, of presenting the Dallas Police Officer of the Year Award for the last 24 years. I don't care if we have every world president speaking. Mm -hmm. That would still be my favorite meeting of the year and will be. It is a study of humility. When you see these men and women, the people that are out there on the streets, so and you and I can sit here right now, the people we don't respect, we don't love on, but yet the people that ensure our freedom. It's, it's truly a study in humility. We presented the Preston Wood Employee of the Year Award for the last 24 years. We've sponsored the North Texas Crime Commission, one of the most vibrant crime commissions in the United States of America. And we've sponsored that for the last 10 years. So it's that reaching out, and it mm -hmm. causes people to reach back. Right, right. And oh my gosh. And, you know, many times I'm asked, well, do you have a life lesson? You know, and, and I'll give you a life lesson. Because we were talking about it before the show. But it's the three A's. The three A's of life, the three A's of love, the three A's of whatever. The first one is accessible. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to buy a house from you, I've got to be able to find you. Right. Accessible. I've got to be able to find you. Mm -hmm. When I find you, you've got to be approachable. You can't be looking over my shoulder to see who else is in the room. 
you got to shake hands with the right hand with right eye to right eye contact. If you have a name tag on, it's got to be on the right side so I don't have to crane my neck to see over it or look down your cleavage or whatever. Right. So you got to be approachable, happy you have been accessible. So I find you, approachable, and then you've got to be accountable, dot, 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 mm. to the relationship that starts from the first encounter. And rest assured, my friends, you don't know when that's going to occur. The example I'll use on stage. I pulled into the parking lot. I cut you off. I took your parking space. I didn't even acknowledge you. I got my what pad folio, my speech notes, and I walked into the building. The next time you saw me, hmm. I was walking out on stage to give a talk. I don't want to know what you're saying to the person sitting next to you, but you have to be accountable yeah. to that first encounter and rest assured you don't know when it's going to happen. That's the life you lead as a realtor. That's the life I lead, led as an insurance agent, and that's the life I led as the founder of Success North Dallas, and it's the life I still lead as Chairman Emeritus. And actually, after I got out of the hospital, I wrote a talk called Not Done Yet that I gave last October that's now turned into a testimony, but I took that 3A talk Mm -hmm. The three A's. And I turned that into a discipleship talk. You gotta be accessible. I gotta be able to find you. Yeah. You gotta be approachable. You gotta have a conversation with me. Don't tell me. You gotta have a conversation. And then you gotta be accountable to that first encounter, the way you live your life. Is that a testimony? Is that discipleship? Mm -hmm. It's amazing how all of these intersect. Right. And they're all inflection points in life. You've mentioned people and love. People and love. And love, yes. right? It's, you connect through people and you do it with love, right? So what, is there a point in life, have you always been that way, or is there something that happens, is there an inflection point in your life where you realize that that is what life is about? We were opening the Ronald McDonald House And we were now at our second Valentine's Day. And as I said, I was Vice President of Community Interaction, so we were going to have an event. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's this lady that's led the Crystal Charity Ball and everybody. The, the, the Ronald McDonald House Board and Advisory Board was a who's here of Dallas. It was the number two and three placement for junior league. And this lady named Sandra Estes, said to me, Bill, just this is your deal today, but just go stand over there, watch what I do, follow my lead, it's all going to work out just fine. <laughs> then she smiled and put her arm around me. She says, now, your team's behind you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that lady loved on me. And that... The house that cries the tears, the house that cooks the meals, the house that loved Bill kind of kind of stuck. And I think that was really the point in time when I was very much a connector. I believe I believed all my life, never met a stranger. Worst case scenario, you'll know who you don't like. That's right. But my perception of meeting people changed. My the way I treated them changed mm -hmm. after, because up until 29, I was a smart aleck. I mean, I hadn't even taken a two-week, I was too important to take a two-week vacation. Come on. And it, it, that really changed. That's probably, and I've never been asked that question before. But that's very probably in that year after the opening of the Ronald McDonald House when I went through that, that transformation of how I approached and how I met people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
John Casey and I that founded CEO Network, NetWeavers, we wrote a piece together called Working the Room. And it's still out there, but it was about how you interact with people. It even went so far at the end of it and said, and men, don't wear that smelly cologne. Nobody wants to smell you. You know, but you know, little things like that. Right. It was two pages of, it was a two-page diatribe. <laughs> but uh, it was fun. And then my book is uh, uh, The Fulfilling Life of a Servant Leader. Uh, it, that's the tag to it. Yeah. Fulfilling Life of a Servant Leader. The name is Being a Catalyst for Success. And, you know, it's... Uh, I don't want my name on a building. I just want somebody to say, Wallace's footprints walk through here. Mm -hmm. That's the legacy I want. And truly, Success North Dallas is that legacy. The, the, the tens of thousands of lives that organization has touched over the years. Yeah. And people say, well, well, how do you get your speakers? It's an old-fashioned way. They ask us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had the head of emphasis out of India, head of Scotland Yard, uh, we'll have jets landed at us in the airport for the meeting. This meeting last month, we had nine states represented. And we've met at the same place, Prestonwood Country Club on Preston Road, for the last 29 of our 34 years. So we're kind of stuck in our... I mean, the third Wednesday of the month, you know where we are at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about who the speaker is. It will be fabulous. He or she will be fabulous. Current, topical, with immediate takeaways. And you'll enjoy it. Yeah. And so people say, well, when do you mean? It's the third Wednesday. Oh, well, what day is it? I don't know. It's the third Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> and they Just start the laughing. Calendar. But yeah. they remember it. Yeah. It's like, another good example is, if I may, I've not given a business card away in 15 years, even if you've asked me for it. Hmm. Even if you've asked me for it, that I don't ask permission. I said, well, I asked for it. And then I'll take it out of my pocket, and it comes out just like this, where it's facing you. Mm -hmm. I'll hand it two-handed, and I'll say, Matt, success is what we all aspire to. Those interconnecting C's, well, that's what we do. And I flip the card over, connecting the right people for the right reasons at the right time. How might I connect you? Mm -hmm. That card is remembered. That card and your cards and all this digital stuff, ladies and gentlemen, I agree with you. I love this little flash thing, but I've got 13,000 contacts in my phone. That separates you from the herd. Right. Some people ask, well, why is one corner cut? Only one. You only cut one corner. So you'll ask. <laughs> right. The card tells a story and it's remembered and it sets me apart from the herd because here we are in Texas and two hands, when I look down at it, the one in the way, it causes you to look down at it. And then when it's flipped, you keep looking. You remember it. Right. You remember it. And the fact that I ask your permission. You know, Success North Dallas is a no-card pushing zone. But a lot of cards trade hands. But those are relationship cards. Right. Those are cards that were asked for. There's a lot of business done. We can't stop counting. I don't know. I don't even know what number. But if you think about it, we're in Texas. And I'm going to go all the way back to Herb Kelleher and his statement, separating yourself from the herd. But visualize with me, if you will. This is a cow herd, this big oval. Can you see that? Do you see all the cows in it? Now, with a cow herd, you have four things, people, that have set themselves apart. You have the trail boss out front. You have the outriders to hold the herd in. And you have the drag at the back to catch all the strays. So change, Matt, in your world, every one of those cows to realtors. Why would I ever go into the herd to find a realtor when four have already separated themselves mm -hmm. from the herd? Mm -hmm. What are you doing to separate yourself from the herd? Right. Well, obviously, I'm sitting in just what you're doing. I'm sitting in your studio on your show, where you've brought some really great people, and people see that. Thank you, sir. But always make sure somebody's talking about you. I so, will. ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> a fantastic realtor, 
unbelievable with Keller Williams. He has an incredible track record, an incredible history, and his name is Matt Hilton. Now, Matt, how would they get a hold of you? <laughs> That's a great question. So my phone number is 214-632-1020. That is the best way to get in touch with me, either by phone or text. Repeat that and phone number, please. 214-632-1020. Ladies and gentlemen, do you all get that? There we go. If not, it's on tape and you can replay it. There we go. But uh, wow, this has been fabulous. It has been. It has been. And I'm, I have some questions to ask please. you that you probably haven't been asked before. And we're going to keep it. it short and sweet because we've got to wrap this up. However, I'm going to... In listening to your story so far, I see a lot of things that we have done parallel to each other. Um, one of the things is I am a connector as well. And uh, back in 2009, I connected Eddie Holiday with Mo Anderson. Mo Anderson um, was at the time the vice chairman of the board of Keller Williams. And um, I had been at a training down in Austin and she shared that you need to know your why, of why you do business. And she went into this, um, this part of her speech. And then she followed it up with, you also need to have a bucket list. And at the top of her bucket list was to meet Abby Holiday. And there I was in a room of about 100, 150 different team leaders, office managers. And I was thinking to myself, how can two powerful real estate women in the same state not have met each other yet? That just baffled me. So the next morning I got up, drove up from Austin, and being a realtor, I'm in, from the Dallas area, knew where Evie's office were, was, the little White House there on Northwest Highway, um, but that's not where she offices. She officed up on Sigma, I believe it was, right, or Sigma Alpha. Road. Yeah, Sigma. Um, there in Addison. And so I drove up there, walked in, and I saw, when I was walking in, I saw her car out front. And I was like, He's here. That's awesome. I walk in, ask for, you know, if I could speak with Evie, and her assistant comes out. And um, she's an elderly lady as well. And um, she has asked me how I could, how she could help me. And I said, I'm very Beth. I just need to ask Evie a couple of questions. And um, she said, well, if you'll wait here, she's busy right now, but wait in the lobby. And so I waited there for a few minutes. I don't remember how long it was, but she came out and she said, Evie, I'll see you now. And that was a surreal moment because I wasn't really expecting to get in at that time. Um, but I walked in and Evie was sitting down at her desk, handwriting her thank you notes that she notori was notoriously known for. And she looked up and she was like, how may I help you, young man? And I sat across the desk from Evie and told her of Mo Anderson's dream of meeting her. And of course she was, you know, excited and, and happy and, and she said, you know what, we're going to make this happen. So long story short, at the mansion on Turtle Creek, we had a lunch, um, or they had a lunch, and Mo Anderson had said, in order for this to happen, you need to be present. And I told her, I said, this isn't about me, this is about the two of you meeting. And she said, either it, you're there or it's not going to happen. I agree. So I was there amongst these two iconic real estate women who were meeting for the first time, and I was a fly on the wall. They just, they had the conversation. I barely said probably two sentences during the whole meal. The experience of helping someone's dream come true was something that lit a fire in me. Mm -hmm. So what I have done since then is I have helped other dreams come true. Um, and at the end of 2021, I started a nonprofit called Who Do You Know? Um, and it's about inspiring imagination and dreaming again within people from all walks of life by making connections. And we focus on three pillars. Those three pillars are a person you would like to meet that is living, a place you would like to go, or an experience you'd like to have. So I'm going to ask you those three questions. And they're just answers to those questions, no elaboration, uh, just who would you like to meet that's living? Clarence Thomas would be one. Clarence Thomas. Okay. Clarence Number Thomas. Thomas, uh, you know, has, bro has broken the mold on so many things. Uh, I have a great deal of respect for him. I had the opportunity to have another person that I would have put there, Ben Carson, while he was running for president, flew hmm. in and spoke at Successful Dallas. 
Where would you want to go? A place you would like to visit that you haven't been to yet? Taj Mahal. Okay. And what experience would you like to have? A Cowboys game on Thanksgiving Day, I'm sure you've done. I'd like to address Congress on term limits. All right. So <laughs> this is the way this works. I will activate what I call my beehive and my bees to activate and engage and see what they can do to help make your dreams come true of meeting Justice Thomas, Chief Justice Thomas, right? Um, to meet or uh, to go to Taj Mahal. And the last one, you're going to have to refresh my memory. The last one was a bit of a it's very sardonic. Uh, oh, to, to address, address Congress. Congress on term, <laughs> on term limits. limits. Yeah, so that's what we'll, uh, we'll work on. So, um, and I know you can appreciate what I'm doing as far as being a connector because you do, you have emulated that throughout your life and continue to do so. And um, I just have so much admiration and respect for you and what I, the little I know of you from today's uh, time together. Um, I want to get to know you more. Well, I love the name of your nonprofit because the name of the working title of the book I'm working on right now, it's not who you know, it's not what you know, it's what you know about who you know. There we go. There we go. <laughs> but I, I love that. I, I love the passion. Your whole demeanor, your body language changed when you started talking about your nonprofit yeah. and, uh, and the why. So I think that's a very wonderful why that you now have for yourself. It's contagious. Oh, it is believe contagious. me. <laughs> Love is contagious. It is. It and is. and it changes. You know, Andrew Lloyd Webber wrote a song, Love, Love Changes Everything. And I challenge you all to go listen to that song because it's 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 something we've lost. It's something we ignore. Uh, it's like the third element of success in North Dallas, be a giver. It's all about our fellow men and women. And in, in a lot of cases, we've forgotten our fellow men and women. Right. And I think what you're doing here is indicative of what a whole lot of other people need to get off their backsides and start doing. Thank you for that. Thank you for, that. My Thank pleasure. You for being here. I'm honored. I've, I've enjoyed this, is this a, time. This has been a treat. Yes. And Same for me. I mean, we're here in Curly Studios. Right. You know, I, I met Jeff when he called me up and said, if you want to write a, I've, I've been told if I want to write a book in Dallas, I need to know you. And that started a lifelong friendship. But that goes back to that letter. That goes back to that 1979 and the things that happened from that one letter. Yeah. And I wish to everybody out there that you too receive at some point your letter. Most definitely. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, sir. Everybody, thank you for tuning in today, and tune in next week as we have another fascinating person with an inspiring story. Bye, y'all. If you'd like to contact Matt or know a fascinating person with an inspiring story that would make a great guest, reach out to the show at thematthiltonshow at gmail.com.